What is a ball patio home? How is it different from a traditional home? My name is Donald J. Ball. I designed, developed, and built the ball patio homes. I would like to answer these questions for you. My son DJ has made a 3D model of the first ball patio homes, which were built in Sunnyvale on Reed and Evelyn Avenues. Let's take a look with him at the 3D models. All the floor plans were the same with two different roof types. We offered a lower roof, which is a 6 and 12 pitch, and a higher roof, which is a 9 and 12 pitch. As I rotate the model upwards, you can see that the 9 and 12 pitch is much steeper. But before we delve into the models, I would like to explain how I arrived at the design. I had two design features that I wanted to highlight. These design features were privacy and indoor-outdoor living. I called these my two overriding design principles. They are the defining characteristic of a ball patio home. Let me explain what I mean when I say overriding design principle. If there are two areas in the design that are in conflict with each other, I choose the overriding design principle of either privacy or indoor-outdoor living. Here's an example. I wanted the ball patio homes to be completely private, so I built seven-foot high walls around the homes. This reduced the curb appeal of a ball patio home. Since privacy was the overriding design principle to me, I accepted the fact that my homes would have reduced curb appeal. To me, privacy was more important. Let's go back to the 3D models with DJ. It is easy to understand the design principle of privacy. The stucco walls provide most of the privacy. If someone can walk up to your front door, you have lost privacy. We considered the gate to be the front door of the home. If I rotate the model and zoom in on the gate, you can see that there is an intercom system located next to the gate. What you can't see is that we placed a gate release button on the inside of the house. This ensured your privacy. The walls ensured the privacy of the windows, eliminating the need for curtain or blinds. Now they were only used for light control. We have placed a 5 foot 6 inch woman in the rear of our model. She is located in the master bedroom. If I rotate around and reposition the model, you can see her. She is standing in the master bedroom. If I rotate the model to the viewpoint of a rear neighbor, say someone standing in their backyard, you can see that the woman has disappeared. In fact, you can't see into any of the windows or the patio doors. The walls ensured the privacy of a ball patio home. Privacy is the reason the first homes were single story. If someone could look into your home, the first thing people would do is put up blinds or curtains for privacy. This was something we worked hard to avoid. As the ball patio homes continued to evolve, we did build two-story homes. I made sure that you could not easily look from one ball patio home into another. In some cases, we put the windows up high so you could not stand and look out, or we built walls next to the windows so you could not look at an angle into your neighbor's yard or home. Also, your neighbor could not look into your home. Our second overriding design principle is indoor-outdoor living. Some aspects of this principle are obvious, some are not. This principle design affected the roof design, the foundation type, the ceiling treatments, the type and placements of windows, the inner court, and the landscape choices. What do I mean when I say indoor-outdoor design principle? This is a principle I made up and it accurately reflects what I was trying to achieve. I wanted the inside of the home to be as light and bright as possible to reflect the outdoor environment. I also wanted the outside of the home to be an extension of the inside. This made the yard and home flow as one. Let's start with the roof design. Why did we build flat roofs? We wanted to let in as much light as possible. Raised roofs cast shadows. So the next logical question should be, why is there a pitched roof over the front of the home? When you are outside, you have a feeling of openness. We wanted to bring this feeling of openness into the home. Most people just sleep in their bedroom and spend the majority of their time in the living areas of the home. So there was a trade-off we made. To bring openness and volume into the home and have an outdoor feeling, we needed a cathedral ceiling. This is why we built a pitched roof over the living areas. We built the foundation of a home over a concrete slab to lower the home with the outside ground level. 
We wanted the house and the yard to flow as one. In a traditional home, built on a raised foundation, you look down on the yard from the inside of the home. By building the home on a slab, we could achieve our goal of having the home and the yard flow as one. We wanted the yard to feel as an extension of the home. When we built the first model on Reed Avenue, we used the same flooring tile in parts of the landscaping. As you can see in this original photo of the model, the floor extends out into the inner court. Okay, let's get back to the 3D model. To see how window placement and type of windows used was affected by the indoor-outdoor design principle, I have taken off the roof of the model of the 9 and 12 pitched roof. I have also changed the background to black. As I rotate the model around, you can see that almost every single room has a patio door. With patio doors, we have large unobstructed windows which extend to the floor. In the kitchen and dining areas, we use 10 foot wide patio doors. These patio doors were also selected because they allow us access to one of the most important features of a ball patio home. They give us access to the patios. This brings us to the landscaping. As much as possible, every room in a ball patio home leads out onto a patio. As you can see, as I rotate the model down, the only room that doesn't orientate onto a patio is the hall bathroom. This is also why we put in an inner court. We wanted the bedroom and the den to orientate onto a patio. This did two things for our design. We were able to visually steal the yard space and make it feel like part of the home. These homes were only 1,200 square feet, but for anyone who has ever been in one, they feel much larger. This is because of the indoor-outdoor design principle we followed. Now that we have covered the two overriding design principles of a ball patio home, I want to cover a few of the design choices that fell outside these two design principles. They are the choice to build a zero lot line wall and the enclosing of the front yard inside stucco walls and the use of exposed wood in the cathedral ceiling. Let's start with why did we build zero lot line homes? We wanted to have a usable side yard. This meant that one of the walls of the house needed to be built on property line. For this house, it is this wall. By placing the home over to one side of the lot, it allowed us to have a usable side yard on the other side. If we had placed the home in the middle of the lot, the side yard patios would have been too small to use. We enclosed the front yard for the same reason. We wanted to have the living room orientate onto a private patio. We wanted it to be large and usable. We put a swimming pool in the front yard of the model home on Reed Avenue. We did this to show potential buyers that the front yard was usable yard space. We have recreated this in our model. The ceiling height was driven by the indoor-outdoor design feature as we previously discussed, but not the treatment. We used exposed wood beam ceilings in the cathedral portion of the roof because we wanted to create the feeling of being on vacation when you were home. We wanted it to feel like a Lake Tahoe cabin. In fact, the last ball patio homes we built in 1986 had exposed wood beam ceilings in almost every room of the house. I hope this helps you to understand and appreciate a ball patio home. Over the years, we have found that people either love or hate ball patio homes. For my part, I love them. I live in the model home of the ball patio homes we built in Mountain View. The architectural community also appreciates these homes as I have won two American Institute of Architects Award of Merit and one Gold Nugget Award from the Pacific Coast Builders Conference for my ball patio homes.